so in this video we'll see how to use the create command okay so now that we have the pg admin with us let us create a new database this will be a test database to create this database we will go to the database options and right click on it we will just give a name to this database which will be test and we will save this database once this database is created we will get a notification saying database connected as you can see the database is now connected and we have a new database we will look at how to delete this database also we just right click on this database and click on the delete and drop option yes this we say is the graphical way of doing this you can also create a database using sql queries but that will be not covering right now we'll start with creating a new database which will be using for further queries and we will be adding tables and data into that database so let us create a database called training the second line is the owner this is the user which is creating the database there are other users also to whom you can give special rights in the later part of this series for now the owner is the sole user that we have for this database which is postgres so now save it now you can see that the training database is created in this database next what we will do is add table so this training database is going to be a database of customers and products and the transaction that those customers are doing so we will have three different tables in this database first will be of customers which will contain customer data second will be of products which will contain product data and third will be of transaction so for example customer a is buying product b so the third table will have information like customer a bought this much quantity of product b for this much amount so we'll create this three tables and add data to it so to create a table we will be using create table command so before writing this command let's look at its syntax and an example of this command so to create a table using the create command we'll need to name the table and also give the name of all the columns and their data types if you look at the syntax of this command this starts with create table after that you mention the name of the table and after that we have a bracket within this bracket you will mention all the columns for each column you need to mention the data type which this column will contain we will be discussing these data types in the later part of this series next part is defining column constraint this i have put in square bracket as it is optional you need not give all the constraints while defining the table so you list down all the columns give the table constraints if any you close the command using a semicolon so when writing a query you can have a number of spaces these spaces are immaterial you can use multiple lines so you can press enter after any word you need not remember this but when you practice writing queries it will be become your habit so while writing a query there are some good practices for example like some developers write all the keywords in capital letter it is not mandatory but you need not write create table in capital letters so just to segregate and make it more readable you can keep all the sql commands as capital and other command as normal case now we will look at what all constraints are available to be put on the column majorly three are the six types of constraints first is not null if you define any column to be not null it can't have blank value in it it cannot be null this check will ensure that whichever column is mandatory for you while entering data you don't miss out that value if you miss that value while storing the data it will give you back an error second is default constraint this can be defined to store a default value if any input is missing for the particular cell unique constraint will ensure that the particular cell has a unique value within that column using the check constraint you can specify a certain criteria against which the data inputted will be checked and the last two are the key constraint you can specify any column to a primary key or a foreign key let us look at these two types of keys now primary key is a column or a set of columns which makes the value in a table unique primary key therefore ensures that there are no duplicate records in the database if there are more than two columns used as a primary key it is known as composite key 
Now, foreign key is usually a column that references another column of another table. Let us look at this from an example. So, suppose we have one table which is customer table and it is storing customer ID, customer first name and customer last name. We will define customer ID to be a primary key. To identify each individual customer, customer ID will not be duplicate. And each customer will have only one customer ID. Now in the second table which is the order table which contains the description of all the orders that we are creating. Here order ID is our primary key. But the customer ID is a foreign key. What that means is that this column will have values which are available only in the customer ID columns of the customer table. It will not have any other value. This foreign key column is related to the primary key of the customer table. And it is restricting the values in the column by the superset of values in the customer ID of customer's table. So if you can imagine the values in the order table, there will be several orders which have same customer ID. So if same customer is ordering different products, for that order the customer ID will be same. So the primary key of the order will be unique but the foreign key will be having duplicate values within a table. Having duplicate values for a foreign key is allowed but it is not allowed for primary key. Secondly, when you want to find out first name and last name of a particular customer with a particular order ID. So for example, if I want to find out the customer who ordered with the order ID 1, I'll see the customer ID of the customer in the orders table and then I will find out what is the first name and the last name of that customer with that particular customer ID. So this is the concept of keys. It is very important to specify which will be our primary key and which will be your foreign key. So with this information let us now create the first table the customer tables in our database. To create the table we will start writing the SQL query. If you remember how we got this screen we right clicked on the database and selected the query tool. This is where we will write the query. We will start writing create table command. Create table is the command. After this we will specify the table name which is customer table. After this we will start a bracket and within this bracket we will list out the column. First is the customer id. Then we will write data type in and next will be comma. Next column is our first name. We will provide its data type as varchar. Again a comma. Next field is last name. Here also we will provide the data type varchar. And our last column is age which will be having the data type of integer. Now we will close the bracket and remember to put the semicolon. To run this query you will need to either click on this button or you can just click on F5 to execute this query. You can see that query written successfully in this the seconds. Your query has run. So now to see the table open the database. Go to the schemas within public in within public. Inside this tables, you can see your table. As you can see, here we are having our customer table. And to see the columns inside this table, just click on the column. Where you can see the column which you are having. These are the four columns which we have created in this query. So, that's all for today. See you in the next video.